Hey everybody, Coach Brew here. We're gonna do our uh, pumpkin spice food review on pumpkin spice Cheerios. And uh, it's quite a marketing lesson as well. I've got uh, so much stuff for you, I needed, I needed notes. Uh, there are actually 12 different flavors of Cheerios. Cheerios are a great example of kind of the evolution of a brand, uh, marketing to two different audiences. We're gonna break all that down, but uh, first I wanna jump into this, by giving you the 12 different flavors like over the years. Uh, they started out with original, they went to um, cinnamon, uh, honey nut, multi-grain, ancient grain, uh, honey nut medley crunch, I don't know how that's different from honey nut, frosted, apple cinnamon, Fruity, banana nut, multigrain peanut butter, chocolate, uh, pro tip, let the chocolate melt in the milk first, then eat it, and then drink the chocolate milk. Uh, multigrain dark chocolate crunch, something called dolce de leche. I don't even know what that means. I'm not even gonna attempt to translate it. If you know what dolce de leche means, um, Put it in the comments uh, or message me and let me know. Dolce de leche. It's three words. That's three words. I just did that. Three words. Um, cinnamon burst is another flavor. Protein cinnamon almond, protein oats, and honey. Um, I found a guy online that actually taste tested, reviewed, and ranked all 12 of the Cheerio flavors, which I thought was really interesting. But uh, Cheerios is a great example of marketing in the United States because uh, it's one of the best-selling breakfast cereals of all time. Uh, it's been around for more than 75 years. It was first called Cheery Oats. And um, a guy at General Mills in Minnesota invented like a little gun that puffed out um, hollow little um, oat circles with like a, a hollow center. And they were called Cheery Oats. Fun fact, if you're ever on Jeopardy and that's a question, I just made you money. Um, the guy's name was Lester Borchard in 1941. He's a physicist in Minnesota who uh, invented that. Now why Cheerios are, I think, such great marketers and general mills in general? Um, it's because they capitalize on uh, sort of the the ethos of the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times at different times during their evolution. So mascots were a big thing in uh, the 40s and 50s. Cheerios came up with a mascot who was a little girl. Her name was Cheery O'Leary, and uh, she was featured in television commercials uh, in the 40s and 50s, and then again in the 80s, um, when she had like a a role with, I think after that, you know, animation became big. Uh, they had the Cheerio Kid, which was an animated character with uh, his sidekick. Anyway, um, those those uh, ads were all about like kids and problem solving. So they really kind of spoke to the kids, uh, kept their interest, but also spoke to the parents. And that's an important thing when you have a product like this. Um, then they evolved again in the 60s, they started uh, Having product placement with Cheerios, Cheerios boxes um, and the actual product itself in cartoons like Rocky and Bullwinkle and some others. Um, trying to think of some others. There's Rocky and Bullwinkle and um, Hoppy Hooper was a frog. Uh, I've never heard of him either. But anyway, um, they advertised there, did a product placement in cartoons. You know, they're, they're probably one of the product placement pioneers of their times. And they actually did uh, some Rocky and Bullwinkle uh, TV commercials as well with Cheerios. And what that is, is a great example of General Mills and Cheerio boxes. Uh, you know, they're pioneers with uh, cross marketing campaigns, basically what they did. Um, and this is evidenced by they partnered with Disney, um, offering like comic books. Uh, they had. Uh, they uh, advertised the Mickey Mouse Club on the boxes, and the Mickey Mouse Club advertised Cheerios. And then my favorite one, and this is one that I personally remember uh, participating in, was they had uh, Cheerios had Lone Ranger action figures. 
and uh, in the, like the small toy in the box back when you used to be able to put a small toy in a box and you didn't have to worry about kids like choking on them and parents suing the company. Anyway, um, they did a promotion where you get a Lone Ranger action figure, which I got in my box of Cheerios. And then they did another promotion where uh, you could become like one of the Lone Ranger's deputies. And what you had to do is you had to get um, like 11 of these UPC codes and write into the address on the box with like a self-addressed stamped envelope. They sent you a Lone Ranger mask that you could wear, a badge, and uh, like a, a, a certificate of authenticity, essentially deputizing you. Like you get a certificate or like a contract, really. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. You know, I ate so many Cheerios just to get those 11 UPC codes and mail it in. I probably drove my parents nuts. But um, could you imagine like making kids today or even adults today jump through that many hoops? Like if they can't just snap the uh, QR code off the bottom of the box and uh, instantly message to get their prize, they're not doing it. Uh, so again, just a great example of like back when we had an attention span and were able to delay gratification. Um, so that was in the 70s and then in 76, they came out with uh, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios. What was interesting was again, they used that mascot, the Bumblebee, but fun thing happened. Honey Nut Cheerios became more popular than the original Cheerios. And to this date, um, sorry, every year since 2009, so for the last decade, Honey Nut Cheerios has been by far the best-selling breakfast cereal uh, in America. And yeah, it's, it's a really, really interesting thing that Cheerios has done going with pumpkin spice. I'm going to take a bite right now. We're going to go without milk, and then we'll do with milk. You definitely taste like the cinnamon and nutmeg. It's strong, but it doesn't overpower the oats. I wonder what Dolce de Leche tastes like. I'm still stuck on that. Anyway, um... Underwhelming. It's almost too much cinnamon and nutmeg. You don't really taste like the pumpkin puree that they claim is in here. They show you the ingredients on the back of the box. I don't really taste any pumpkin puree, um, but I'm gonna throw a little milk in here. I don't know if you remember the commercial, but you, if you're watching this, you might be old enough to remember when Cheerios did a promotion where uh, they claim that a diet, a daily diet uh, with Cheerios, not Cheerios in and of themselves, but a daily diet with Cheerios could lower your cholesterol. And a funny thing happened. They, they showed commercials of like a dad who had high cholesterol and he would have Cheerios in the morning with his kids at the breakfast table. And then on his way to work or while he was at work, he'd reach into his suit pocket and there'd be like a handful of Cheerios with a note from the kids. Dad, don't forget to eat these. We got to lower your cholesterol. Anyway, tug of the heartstrings marketing. Well, in 2009, when this is going on, the FDA accused General Mills of misleading the public on Cheerios' ability to uh, lower cholesterol. And the claim was it can lower bad cholesterol by 4% in six weeks. And the FDA basically sent a cease and desist to General Mills saying, you either need to change the print on the cereal box because that's false advertising, or you need to apply to get Cheerios classified as a cholesterol lowering drug. Which is just kind of funny in and of itself. Long story short, they changed the label on the box to just say eating Cheerios as part of a healthy diet may help lower cholesterol. Uh, so let's take a bite of this. It's a little better with milk. But still very heavy on the uh, cinnamon and the nutmeg. Mostly the nutmeg. It's almost like, uh, those are almost like nutmeg Cheerios. I 
can't say I'm a fan. Uh, you do taste the sugar though, which is nice. Have a little, uh, little breakfast treat and a little sugared cereal, which I was never allowed to have as a child. Yeah, so I'm gonna say um, without milk is a very different experience than with, with the milk. Uh, not great either way. I'm a big Honey Nut Cheerio fan and traditional Cheerios. Pumpkin Spice Cheerios seems like, you know, I wouldn't say gimmick because they're an iconic brand. Uh, Cheerios are one of the original breakfast cereals. But they've proven with 12 different flavors, they experiment, they try different things, introduce it, take it away from the market. Uh, you know, this clearly uh, says uh, limited edition at the very top of the box. So, um, you know, they're just introducing a flavor to the market to see if it sells during the fall season, which is smart. Um, they're smart marketers. They didn't become the number one breakfast cereal by accident, but it's, it's more like a nutmeg Cheerio. I give it a 2.6 without milk, and it's about a 4.5 with milk. Um, the one thing I do love about Cheerios in general and part of their evolution as a brand is they're now GMO free and gluten free. That started in 2014 and it wasn't that they weren't always uh, technically gluten free. What they did was they just changed their process to prevent cross contamination. I'm gluten free and uh, so you can definitely tell when some things have had like a little cross contamination in the manufacturing process. So uh, they recognize that this is a trend, people have gluten sensitivity. So they decided to evolve again uh, and advertise that they're gluten and GMO free. And when you know, go figure, their sales increased 6%. And uh, that might not seem a lot, if, you know, if you're sitting at home thinking, oh, 6%, that isn't a whole lot. But when you're the number one breakfast cereal in America, 6% of a huge industry and a significant market share is a lot, you know. Uh, I don't know what their annual sales are, but just, you know, for easy math, take $100 million and go on your calculator on your phone and look up and just figure out what 6% of $100 million is. I'll let you do that math. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what Dolce de Leche is. And uh, yeah. Give it a try yourself. I'm not a huge fan. Um, I think give this a 4.5 with milk. Um, I am a huge fan of Cheerios, the brand, and their ability to evolve. You know, a couple takeaways for you is how's your brand evolving? Uh, how are you doing any kind of cross promotional marketing with other brands to capitalize on their popularity uh, at, at this time in their lifespan, their product lifespan as well? And uh, how are you capturing trends? You know, non-GMO, gluten-free, um, partnering with different brands who have uh, characters that are sort of part of pop culture. And, uh, you know, just approaching it, you know, as like your brand has a, a life cycle and a lifespan and it should be maturing with time. And, you know, part of maturing is changing. I'm a very different person than I was when I was a kid. Uh, I'm a very different person than I was when I was in my 20s. Like we're all constantly growing and maturing. Brands should be the same way. So that's a review with milk. It's a 4.5. Without milk, it's uh, a nutmeg Cheerio. And uh, we'll catch you next time.